Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic, Nathan. How are you? I'm doing okay. You threw a curveball at me this morning, and I'm a little bit, I'm caught a little bit off guard. You're welcome. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so what do we what do you got planned for this week's episode? I figured we'd throw a little monkey wrench in it, change up the format a little bit, and just have a little bit of a conversation you and I and you could ask me some questions. Okay, so then I get to ask you anything then. Throw the notes right out the window. <laughs> okay, so uh you know what? I'm going to s- if you don't mind, I'm going to start by asking some questions about what's going on in the sales gorilla world actually it seems like you're changing it seems like you're shifting or pivoting and some uh, maybe your ideal target avatar has moved a little bit a little bit a lot of it a lot of it um it's it's interesting from my perspective because it's actually been fairly fluid the last two years on how we've done this um we did an episode a couple of weeks back about evolving, right? And what it is that we really, what it is that we teach people from a, from a a macro level is identify who it is that you want to work with, what you want to work with them on and do what it is that you want to do with your own time. And um, I think that changes for most people as they, either get better at their thing or they progress in doing their thing and talking with a lot of the clients that we work with. That's kind of what we've found is that most people between generally between 18 and 24 months, they make leaps, right? For some people, it's even faster than that. But for most of our clients, most of our, our ideal client avatars who have, you know, three, five, seven years or more experience in doing the thing that they do, they evolve in chunks every year or so they're either up leveling or they're getting more specific or they're going into a new vertical or what or whatnot and um for us really it's it's kind of been the same journey and like i said to start this seeing this from my perspective it's been very fluid but seeing this from our market's perspective it's um it seems almost abrupt And yeah, we are making some fairly drastic changes in who we serve and what we serve them with, for, and on because we're getting more in alignment with that one key piece. What is it that we want to do with our time? Okay. So now I'm going to ask a a question that's just selfish of me, but I'm in a situation right now where because I do your podcast, because I do David's podcast, because I do Pradeep's podcast, I'm having a lot of people come to me and they want me to do their podcasts. And I don't want to do any more podcasts. I want to stick with what I've got. If somebody was to persuade me into taking on another podcast, they would have to be, they would have to be up to your guys' level or more. Business owners that find themselves in a position where there's a market demand for something they don't want to do and it seems like more of a market demand for what personally I prefer writing copy. I get paid a lot more for writing copy. It's less frustrating for me to write copy. There's less moving parts when I write copy. Um, But I am seeing an increased demand for something that I, no offense. I love doing the podcast with you, but I don't want to take on more podcasts. What should a business owner do when they find themselves in a position where what the market is asking for is not particularly what it is that they want to be doing. Strategic partnerships, right? You've got your crew of your buddies, your, your running mates, you've got your inner circle of people that you're friends with and your businesses all kind of complement each other. Um, This is the perpetual business machine. It's not what you know. It's not who you know. It's, who you know that knows the people that want to know what you know. So if you need to like reverse that and go back and listen through that again, it's not what you know, it's not who you know, it's who do you know that knows the people that want to know what you know, right? 
you're really good at doing the podcast thing. You're really good at being a co-host producer and, and doing all of those pieces, but you don't want to take on more for it. I would be a fool to think that you don't have a couple of really good buddies that do this for a living that you could help filter out some of the people that come to you and say, Hey, I want you to do my podcast. And you're like, yeah, but you can't even speak in sentences, right? You're not going to pass that person off to somebody that you're friends with that, Hey, here, go struggle with this person. Right. But you've probably got a couple of people that do this podcast thing and that's what they do for a living. And how better to get clients than from a trusted referral source, right? They're filtered, they're pre-qualified, they're sent already sold. Hey, I wanted to work with Nathan, but basically he told me that he's not as good as you are because you don't want to work with that guy. And he told me to come talk to you, right? That's what a business owner should do. Hey, look, if you're a surgeon and you fix people's broken bones and you don't want to work with somebody's eyes or ears or nose, don't. Find somebody that's really good at that and partner up with them. Okay. And from off of the podcast talks that me and you have had, this is actually something that you're kind of pivoting your business into is focusing on this actual strategy, which is leveraging your existing network. Let's, let's kind of talk about that for a minute. Uh, besides sending people that could be your business to people in your network, what are, what are some of the benefits of leveraging a network in this way? And um, why should a, a lot of business owners might say, well, I, it's work. I don't want to turn down work. You always talk about your genius zone. Why should I, why should I give work to people that are in my network if it's not in my genius zone? Or even if it is, but I just don't want to be taking it on. Whether we want to believe it or not, we as a species operate in clicks. You can put whatever cliche term on that that you want, right? If you, if you go fishing, there's a small handful of your buddies that you go fishing with. If you go ride skateboards, there's a small group of your buddies that you go ride skateboards with. If you like to get together on Sunday afternoons and, and drink wine and make appetizers with your girlfriends, there's a small group of people that you want to do that with. Business is no different and absolutely blows my mind. It's relationships. Because there's a potential transactional aspect to a business relationship, people seem to think that they're different. It all comes down to relationships. It all comes down to who it is that we want to spend our time with. And as far as business goes, would you rather somebody that you don't know send you somebody, they have no idea how you do what you do. And, and now there's this person, you've got to take time out of your day to explain, no, 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 no. This is how I do it. Or would you rather have a, a group of friends that know you well, know what you're like, know what you're about, know how you do things, know what your strengths and your weaknesses are sending you clients. I mean, it's kind of a no brainer. And this is, yeah, it's funny that you kind of like, shifted gears into this. This is where we're headed because this is ultimately, this is what I ended up doing when I was in my sales career is identifying people that I dug and wanted to hang out with and wanted to like, you know, I wanted to call Bob up and find out what happened this last weekend at the thing that they went and did blah, 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 because we've talked about it for three months, right? Instead of Oh, that's right. You mentioned that thing 19 times and I don't care about you enough to have remembered that. Oh yeah. Tell me about that. Cause I want to spend 15 minutes listening to something stupid that I don't care about from somebody that I don't know. Right. It just makes sense. Um, and once you build and establish a relationship and you've earned the no like, and trust, and there's mutual benefits there and all of that, it's not like ads. You can't turn it off. There's no, there's no way to turn it off, right? I'd rather have a group of salespeople that really know me, love me, trust me, like me, appreciate me, understand what I stand for and all of that, sending me the right kinds of clients because that, there's nothing more I need to do activity-wise. I've heard this strategy before, but I'm a little bit skeptical of it. Uh, of, and I don't even remember where it was in some marketing book. It was probably a marketing book that was written back in the eighties, but this idea of strategically referring people. So if 
a doctor and a dentist and a uh, maybe an auto body person. They are all in the same Better Business Bureau or, or Chamber of Commerce, and they say, hey, I'm going to have, whenever somebody comes in and says they have an infection, I'm going to recommend you. If somebody comes in and they're talking about their car is not working, you recommend me. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Because I have, I have some uh, apprehension, apprehension about that. No, it is absolutely not what I'm talking about. A lot of people misconstrue what I mean when I say strategic partnerships with what are commonly known as referral partnerships, right? Referral partnerships are, I scratch your back, you scratch my back. I scratch your back, you scratch my back. There's always an element of obligation there. Those never work in the long term. And when we choose those kinds of, of relationships, when we choose those kinds of partnerships, we're only in it for our end. The way that this actually works the right way is, is when you have created a relationship, when you've built a relationship with somebody and they actually care about what you do and they appreciate what you do and they think you're awesome and you're really good at what you do, they want to send people to you that need your help because they want those people to get the help they need. And there's nothing that they're expecting in return. It's interesting. It always, it always comes down to this. It's like sex. If you have to pay for it, it's probably not that good, right? <laughs> Reciprocation in, in referral partnerships never works out. It just, it never works out because somebody always feels like they got less than what they gave. And that's not what relationships are about. So it seems like for this to work, you kind of have to have a little bit of blind faith. You have to say, I, if I see somebody that needs help, I'm going to send them to people regardless of whether or not I think I'm going to get something out of it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not being attached to a reciprocated outcome. But I don't teach people how to go find people to send others to. That should be natural. You're a podcaster. You've been in this podcasting game forever and a day. You probably know three or four people that are really good. And you could probably think of Tommy and you could probably say, you know what, dude, Brian is your best bet to do your podcast because you've already taken the time to build that relationship. So that's you sending people that are coming to you. Well, if you're good at what you do, you should have a fair understanding of who else in your marketplace serves the same people that you could, right? If you, if, if somebody's coming to you for something you don't want to do, it should be not very hard to come up with somebody of, Hey, actually you should go talk to this person where we're headed is the other direction how to identify people you would want to get to know and like go hang out with and have nothing to do business with wise just because you think they're cool who happen to also serve your perfect marketplace. This is influence marketing. This is influencer marketing. Go find 12 people that serve the same market that you do that are kind of like the go-to people in different various aspects of it. And out of those 12 people, there's probably two or three people that you'd really enjoy being friends with. Go make friends. Let's say I'm a copywriter and I want people to refer me for copywriting clients. Should I go hang out with other copywriters or should I go hang out with other people that also have people who need copywriters? The latter. Okay. Because I think that people might need a little bit of clarification on why one would work better than the other. Mm -hmm. So here's an interesting piece of this. And most people don't think of it like this. Most people think of this as, oh, hey, I want to be your friend. So you send me, you send me referrals. I can do this amazing thing. And you're serving these people that I wish I could serve. And you should just send me clients. That's what most people naturally gravitate towards. And then they can't figure out who they should do that with. Okay, so here's, here's actually how I do it. I look at the marketplace that I want to serve and I go, okay, cool. Who else serves those people that has taken the time to build and establish those relationships and they do something that would either benefit by me doing my thing with their clients, how would that influencer benefit? Or what problem does that influencer have with their marketplace that they haven't been able to see right? right? They've got the wrong perception of it. They don't understand that they've got an issue. And I can step in and go, you know, what if your marketplace, what if the top 10% of your clients were all doing this and it was 
working for them. How would that benefit your world, right? One of the people that we're doing this with right now, they're working at max capacity. The only way that they can make more money is to bring on more clients, raise their prices. And their prices are pretty much at the top of their spectrum, right? But they're max. They can't bring on any more clients, but they've got a team. And so they want to make more money. So everybody makes a little more money. So I looked at their situation. I went, oh, what if all of your current clients were able to pay you another 10 or 20 or 30%? Well, how would you make that happen? And then I explained, well, I would step in and do this and this for them, which would change what they're doing, which would cause them to be able to do more with you. Same amount of clients, you're not raising your prices, but you're getting paid more because we're all in our own forest and we can't see the trees, mm -hmm. right? That's a completely different level of doing this. Now, would I want to do that with somebody that, you know, I don't really enjoy talking to or hanging out with? Not really. Is this something that you set up on Sunday and it happens on Monday? Generally not. This is a long game play. And this, again, comes back to the main thing that we're always talking about. I think a lot of people that are quote unquote business owners have the wrong idea of what they're actually doing. They're in it to make money. They're not in it to do the thing that they're doing. It's the wrong mindset to begin with. Okay. So I mentioned earlier in the episode, we're going to wrap it up real quick, but I mentioned earlier in the episode that this kind of stemmed from a conversation that we had off the air and you were telling me that this is a little bit of the pivot that you're making in some of your training. If people want to know more about how to do this next level of relationship influencer marketing, where can people find out? Is that something that is available to people right now? No, they've got to take a step first. And the step that they've got to take is in one of our workshops. And if you're in our Facebook group, every few weeks, we start talking about a workshop that's coming up. So head on over to our Facebook group. It's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash gorilla juice. Nice. All right, Lyndon. Another fantastic episode, man. Uh, I was going to ask you about how you keep your beard so manly and beautiful, but uh, I think we'll have to save that for another episode. You'll have to ask Ash. <laughs> okay. Uh, until next time, man. We'll catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts.